Hi, my name is Joanne Kennedy and I'm a naturopath in Sydney, Australia, and I specialize in methylation and histamine intolerance. In this video, I'm going to discuss the really interesting link between histamine and estrogen. Okay, so for any woman suffering with histamine issues, you are probably noticing that they can get worse at ovulation when estrogen is peaking or before your periods when progesterone drops low, therefore leaving estrogen unopposed. Okay, so what is happening is a few things. So firstly, women with too much estrogen, so this is estrogen dominance, okay? Now, this is going to cause issues with estrogen stimulating mast cells to release histamine, okay? And then the catch is that all this histamine is going to actually stimulate the ovaries to produce more estrogen, okay? So it's a vicious cycle going around and around, okay? So what are the signs and symptoms of estrogen dominance, okay? This is going to be premenstrual breast tenderness, fatigue, bloating and fluid retention. You can often feel quite sad, Okay, and then what is happening if, if your estrogen is too high compared to progesterone, you can actually feel sort of, sort of slightly inflamed. That can be a low progesterone sign. You can feel anxious. That's a low progesterone sign. You can have issues sleeping. That's a low progesterone sign. Okay, so essentially that is kind of telling us that this is estrogen dominance, Okay, whether you have low progesterone or not, the estrogen is just relatively much higher than progesterone. Okay, and then sometimes we need to think about these symptoms because some of the symptoms that seem like they're low progesterone can be high histamine. Okay, so anxiety, high histamine, muscle cramping, like um, muscle aches, which seem like they're low progesterone, that can actually be high histamine. Okay, insomnia can be high histamine. Okay, so we need to understand what is actually going on with the estrogen and the histamine as well as the progesterone. Okay, so they're the signs and symptoms that we're looking for. Okay, so what then happens, okay, is that the estrogen gets into the brain. It's meant to. We're meant to have estrogen in the brain. It's really important for, it actually can regulate serotonin. We need estrogen to make serotonin. We just don't too, need too much. But what can also happen is that estrogen can cause histamine to get too high in the brain. Okay, now we have histamine in the brain. It's a neurotransmitter. It's important for wakefulness and memory and alertness. Okay, it also does stimulate the release of serotonin and dopamine for a healthy mood. Okay, but when it's too high and estrogen can push it too high in the brain, it can cause dizziness and vertigo, insomnia, anxiety, it can also cause issues with regulating body temperature. Okay, so they are definitely signs and symptoms of estrogen-related histamine, especially when it's coming at ovulation, when estrogen is peaking or before your period when your progesterone drops. Okay, so what do we need? What do we do about this? We need methylation to be working optimally because methylation breaks down histamine in the brain and methylation detoxifies estrogen through the liver. Okay, so we need to be looking at methylation when we're looking at histamine and estrogen. Okay, so the catch sort of, the other catch is that people with high histamine often have terrible guts. Okay, they have a bad gut inflammation, they've got bad bacteria in the gut. And what can happen when you've got too much bad bacteria in the gut is that there's certain types of bacteria that release an enzyme called the beta-glucuronidase enzyme. And that enzyme deconjugates estrogen. So the liver does this amazing job at packaging estrogen up for detoxification through the bowel. And then what happens if you've got high bacteria producing too much beta-glucuronidase enzyme, that enzyme deconjugates estrogen, it breaks it. Okay, and then that's, that estrogen is active estrogen. We need active estrogen, but we don't need too much. Okay, and then you've got too much active estrogen, which can cause more histamine. Okay, now, furthermore, what can happen is that if you do have gut issues, potentially you've got chronic constipation. Okay, and if you've got chronic constipation, then you can't actually be getting rid of your estrogen through the bowels, which you really should be doing on a daily basis. Okay, now to add more fuel to the fire, 
estrogen down-regulates the Dow enzyme that breaks down histamine, okay? So we can see that this is a really, really vicious cycle that you need to get on top of, okay? So what I strongly suggest you do is you need to get your bowels moving ASAP. You need to test for SIBO. You need to do large stool testing to look if there's any candida or dysbiosis in the large intestine, okay? Then you need to be taking nutrients to help detoxify estrogen, at the same time, okay? So doing that can significantly help with these terrible histamine estrogen-related symptoms.